making a condenser for my Stuart Victoria steam plant. The exhaust outlet from the steam engine went via a copper pipe lagged in string to the back of the plant, and I didn't like this because it meant that I had to put a pipe on to the end of that and it went down the back of the bench and over a period the back of the bench would get very wet and very oily and I didn't want that to happen. So I went up to Blackgate's Engineering and bought a piece of tube and these superb gunmetal castings. I think they're from some sort of a feed water heater off an engine, I'm not fully sure about this. And whilst at Blackgate's I was privileged enough to be allowed into the back where all the castings are kept and you've never seen as many castings in your life. But it's great because I can have a look around until I see something that will do the job that I want it to do. Without looking in the back where all the castings are kept, I would never have found these superb castings. They really are good. And because the bushes are cast in, it means I have a centre outlet to the chimney and the bottom casting bush is perfectly positioned for the condensate drain tap. The first thing I did was to square off the end of the copper tube. And I did this using my belt sander and a set square. And then in my old Smart and Brown lathe, which is the larger of the two lathes I have in the workshop, I machined the face of one of the castings. The video at this point is speeded up, because otherwise it would take a long, long time to get through this. The piece of copper tube is going to be soldered to this end casting, so what I'm trying to do is machine a register that locates the copper tube. I'm not getting technical with micrometers and things like that, I keep machining a little bit off and trying the tube for size. It doesn't need to be a tight fit, nor does it need to be a slack fit. And eventually I get the size just right. For the next part of the operation I'll be moving over to my small Boxford lathe, but before I do that I'm using a boring tool to just clean up the inside edge of the casting. And this will make it so that the three jaw chuck in the Boxford will firmly grip the part when I turn it round to machine the outer edge. After I finished machining the first casting, while the boring tool was still in the tool post, I machined the inside edge first. And in this clip, I'm taking facing cuts across the front of the casting to true it up. And then in exactly the same way as with the previous one, I need to machine a register to locate the copper tube. And once again, I'm trying the copper tube in place until I get it the right size. And now it's over to the Boxford lathe, and I've reversed the casting in the chuck, and I'm machining away these two lugs that stick out at each side. This, as I said earlier, is a feed water heater casting for possibly some sort of a steam lorry, I'm not fully sure. There's a perfect position on the steam plant to house this condenser, and it's a good bit bigger than the normal condensers that I make for small steam engines. The main function of this is to be a condenser oil trap, because I want the steam to go up the chimney but as the steam will be mixed with steam oil from the exhaust, I don't want the steam oil going up the chimney, because otherwise it makes a sound like frying fish and chips. And so by having this condenser oil trap in the exhaust circuit, the mixture of condensate and oil can be drained off periodically, and what goes up the chimney is just water vapour. As it's pretty hot in the chimney, the water vapour will evaporate very quickly, and it's a much better way of doing it. After facing off all of the casting bushes, I'm using a centre drill first to drill through the centre bush, and at this stage I don't really know why I decided to go back and take another cut off the outside, probably because I forgot what the setting was on the vernier on the cross slide. The next job was to drill the centre hole two imperial drill sizes less than 3 8 which is tapping size for 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. When I first started the tapping process, I was turning the chuck by hand, but very soon I was losing the will to live. So I put the lathe into back gear to slow it down, and then I let the lathe do the work. And then I put the lathe into reverse, and it's a good tip to just help the tailstock along, take the weight off the tailstock, so you don't enlarge the thread as the tap winds out of the hole. I'm putting very little pressure on the tailstock, literally just taking its weight. And to finish this part of the job, I wound in the lathe tool just to clean up the centre part. And this is just to remove the raggy edge of the thread that the tap left in the hole. To get rid of any sharp edges, I reversed the part in the chuck and used the file to clean up the sharp edges. And with sharp edges removed, I took the casting and the copper tube 
into the outside part of the workshop and I sat the casting on a piece of fire grate. This is stainless steel fire grate, I use it for silver soldering and I am aware that fire brick is better but I don't really have the room for any fire bricks. My workshop is a very small area so I just use a piece of fire grate like this and I've done a lot of soldering on it and it seems to work fine. I'm not silver soldering this by the way, I'm soft soldering this and what I'm doing at the moment is brushing some flux and water mixture around the edge and it really makes the solder flow. This is electrical solder as well and initially I feed the solder in around the inside edge. I can't really show that because if I get the camera this close to show it the camera's going to melt. This by the way is not a pressure vessel, it is always open to atmosphere and soft solder is perfectly adequate because it's also got water in it so it will never get hot enough to melt the soft solder. As you can see from this clip I'm using quite a thin gauge of soft solder and once I'm happy that the solder has penetrated all the way around I'll leave it to cool. And while the first part of the joint is cooling it's back to the Boxford lathe to machine the other casting in exactly the same way as I've just shown. To make it more interesting this clip is edited and speeded up. I have quite a few of these. These are commercial plugs but they're a bit rough and ready so I'm machining one of them. Oh dear. Note to self, I should know better, when machining parts like this that are held lightly in the chuck by the threads, do not take a heavy cut. So it's just as well that I have a few of these. I threw that one away and put another one in the chuck, and this time I took a much lighter cut. And I'm just sort of shaping it and profiling it. Then I'm going to clean it up with the file first, followed by a piece of sandpaper, and then polish it on the polishing spindle. And this is the other end of the condenser. And on this end I'm fitting a steam union, because this is the main steam outlet to the chimney. The blanking plug just fits in the other end to make it look good. It's time now to use the drilling machine, and for people who keep telling me off about holding things in my hand in the drilling machine, I really generally don't. As part of my main job I am a keyboard player, so I do need to be able to use my fingers for making music. I would only ever hold a piece of metal in my hand if I was drilling with a very small drill. With a drill this size it could grab and it would spin the work. So at the bottom that you can't see it's semi clamped in the vise, it cannot rotate. By the way this clip has slowed down, I'm drilling faster than this really. The drill bit that I've just been using to drill the hole is two imperial drill sizes down from 5 16 because I need to thread the hole and I'm threading this hole 5 16 by 32 threads per inch and I'm using my tap guide. I showed how to make one of these in a video a while back and they really are very useful tools to have in the workshop. You will notice I'm using it upside down because the flange on it will not fit in place. This tool guides the tap and makes sure that the hole is threaded squarely. An episode like this wouldn't be complete without using my small Barco spanner and here I'm using it to wind the tap out of the work. So here is the finished condenser. In the next episode I will be piping it all up. But for now thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.